welcome to Midnight Butterflies very first tutorial where we are not making butterflies. That's right, but we are going on a mixed media adventure so you're still going to need your polymer clay along with a handful of glass beads or small glass stones and some metal trinkets. We are going to be making some fairy doors. Now, fairy doors have been on trend for the last couple of years. They're very easy to make and they're fun to make with friends and family. But my favorite thing to do with fairy doors is to go and hide them outside. I've been doing this with rocks recently as there has been a trend on painting rocks and hiding them out there as well. I think this might just be the next level. Okay, so there's a few things you're going to need for this project. I used some ends of flowery canes and leaf canes that I'd not used for a while. I found some little glass magic stones which are very, very sweet. I've also got some glow in the dark clay. It's a little old so I'm not sure how it's going to glow but we will soon find out. Uh, and I've also got a whole load of mud clay which is going to form the basis of our doors and a couple of highlighted colour clays. You're going to need some sort of cutters, so I've got an X-Acto knife and a long flexible blade for those long straight lines. I like to use a couple of ball tools as well for textures, but you can use things like toothbrushes which are really good for creating a sort of a stone effect. Uh, you can also use a ball of scrunched up foil for that effect too, but my favourite is the humble toothpick. It is very, very helpful for creating textures. So we're going to be doing this design here with the mushrooms, it's sort of a hobbit hole with a letterbox and some big mushrooms around it. Um, it's going to be fun creating the wood textures on that one. And then I've got a more magical door for which I would be using the blue magic stones and making some crystals that will hopefully glow in the dark. So step one is to roll out the mud clay on the thicker setting. I'm using a large cutter here just to impress the size of the door on the mud clay. I've cut around it at a sort of an erratic shape and I'm just pushing down the edges with my fingers so that it creates a nicer edge around the whole of the fairy door. Just be gentle with it, but you can smooth out all your fingerprints afterwards. Next I'm just marking out on the door where I want all the elements, so the knocker at the top, then the doorknob on the right hand side, and also where the letterbox is going to be. Then I'm dragging using the edge of the toothpick, not the very tip, but sort of just tilted at an angle to create the panels of wood. At this point I'm then going to cut out the letterbox using my X-Acto knife before then completely going over the door with the toothpick and creating texture in the panels. Now because it's a fairy door I did sort of take a few liberties and do a few swirls in there because it just looked more fun uh, but you can stick to real life wood effects if you prefer. Just go gently into the grain not as deep as the planks. Next using a small ball point Tool, just go around the edge of the fairy door just to really deepen that ridge between the door and the rest of the piece. You want this because we're not going to be putting any edging around this door. If you were putting an edging around the door you wouldn't necessarily need to. So now we're going to be creating texture in the stone. Use a toothbrush for this, honestly it will make it a lot easier. You can use a toothpick but it will take a bit of time but just really push into the clay with your toothbrush and you create a really really nice texture. Using the toothpick again, dragging it along on its sort of flatter side, create the differences between the different types of stone that are going to be surrounding the door. So I chose to do a few different types and what you can do once you've defined the different types of stone is decide which one's going to be more textured than the others, which one's going to be darker in colour, which ones might have lichen on them, all those sorts of things that make the fairy door look more natural. So I decided because I wanted a uh, sort of an older stone, this top right stone I really really indented with texture because I wanted it to look much older than the other stones. And you can do this with your toothpick or you can do it with your toothbrush. 
I also put in some dents into some of the other stones and then I've textured over the top. Now you may not see too much of a difference while you're sculpting it but when you're painting it the paint will catch more into those deep areas especially the darker colours and really bring out that sort of indenture into the stone. This now needs to be baked in the oven, so take it for its first bake according to your packet's instructions. So next we're going to be using some glow in the dark clay to create the mushrooms. Now we're going to have two types of mushrooms, the one on the right are very tall and leggy and the ones on the left are more like toadstools. So but first we're going to make the ones on the right, the long ones. So roll out your glow in the dark clay or you can just use translucent or white if you do not want that effect, that's absolutely fine. I'm going to be making three mushrooms, so I want three big pieces for the top of the mushrooms and three little pieces for the bottom of the mushrooms. They're all going to be roughly the same shape, so they're all going to be sort of domed. So with your thumb underneath the clay, kind of taper it so that it's got a thick top and thinner edges. You can lay it on your mat to achieve the same effect if you prefer. And it doesn't have to be too much of a regular shape, in fact mushrooms are never the same shape twice. For the bottom area do exactly the same but with a smaller piece of clay and then using your toothpick just pull up the clay from the bottom to create lovely little lines in there and that will look like the area underneath the mushrooms. After a little reshape, pop it under the mushroom top that you've made and then just using the toothpick again, just pull into the top of the mushroom shape and not only will that stick the bottom to the top, but you'll also create an extra layer of texture. After making three of those of varying sizes, we're going to move on to the toadstools. So grab a little bit of red, smoosh it into a sort of cone shape and then using your ballpoint tool, just make an indenture into the bottom. You're going to grab a little bit of white after that and just put it in the bottom. Just make sure that it's slightly bigger than the bottom of your mushroom and then it will stick out a little bit. Using the same method as we did on the first set of mushrooms, you can then add some texture to the bottom of this one. Then you want to use a little bit of liquid polymer clay, dab it onto a thick white stump and then set the top of your mushroom on top of that. There are two ways to add white spots to the top of a toadstool. One way is to paint it with white dots and the other way is to roll out a very thin snake of white polymer clay and using the tip of your toothpick just pick up little bits and then roll them flat onto the top of your toadstool. I much prefer the second method because it makes the spots much more irregular and sort of a little bit grainy around the edges. You can't often get that sort of irregularity when you're using paint but it's absolutely up to you. Now we have all the elements, we should get our clay out of the oven, allow it to cool and then break out the paints. So we're going to start with a thick layer of black over everything and we're really going to push it into all the cracks and crevices that we have created in previous steps. I use a hard bristle brush for this and I try and just push the paint really deep into those gaps. Then using a wet wipe and trying not to go into the crevices too much, I'm just wiping off the excess black clay. This will give a really nice impression because it will make all the crevices nice and dark. Once the black is dry, add some grey paint to the stone. Make sure you're just brushing it over the top though and not pushing it into those dark crevices that we've created earlier. You may also want to paint the uh, door at this point. I used sort of a green colour um, as a base uh, and added a little bit of yellow to it. Came out quite a dark green but we're going to add some more yellow to it later. 
once all the paint is dry we're going to be adding our mushrooms to the fairy door so grab some liquid polymer clay and pop it where you want the mushrooms in my case I want some in the bottom right and then I want the sort of willowy ones on the right hand side liquid polymer clay helps raw polymer clay adhere to um, already cooked polymer clay if the elements are still raw you're still able to shape them to fit onto the cooked polymer clay so that's why I find it much easier to do it this way around I've mixed up a few green shades here along with some green polymer clay uh, that glows as well uh, just to create a sort of lichen effect now I've just mixed it roughly I haven't really like gone through the Skinner blend technique or anything I've just mixed it up uh, as, as quickly as I can I'm adding some liquid polymer clay to help it adhere and I've flattened out the green and I'm just sticking it to the top right I want to make a lichen effect here uh, and the best way to do that is add a layer of, sort of a uh, raw polymer clay kind of onto cooked and then just the use a toothpick to the just toothpick. push in the texture bits that come off you just want to add a little bit of liquid palmer clay to another area and then just smoosh those little pieces in it gives a really nice natural effect there you go now it's going in for its final bake again cook to the instructions on your polymer clay packet Oh, it's back, baby. <laughs> so this time it's nice and hard. It's relatively flexible and we are ready to finish off this bad boy. So I'm using some extra yellow paint just to really pick out the yellow on the door. You can use whatever color you like. I squirted the paint straight onto the door because I wanted to really give it a heavy paint job effectively what I'm doing here is I'm just sort of trying to paint as much of the door as possible and then I'm gonna lift the excess paint with a, a dry paper towel and this will just give it the effect that the paint is faded and and sort of peeling um, I didn't want it to look like a brand new door next take some brown paint and just create a thin layer of brown paint on top of the willowy brown mushrooms uh, you just want to pull the paint from top to bottom top to bottom leaving a little bit of a gap between the brown and the edge of the mushroom to sort of create a bit of a rim it's going to look really nice when it glows I also painted the feetsies of these mushrooms I just kind of didn't want it just to abruptly end so next we're going to add the doorknob I'm using some high tech glue here it just happens to be my favorite glue for sticking pretty much anything I'm just using a little wooden bead here you can use whatever bead you like I'm also going to attempt to put a knocker on the top that is a little brass teapot charm which just seems to fit really nicely I added a bit of wire to the charm and threaded it through a glass bead before setting it on the door with a little bit of liquid polymer clay I did bake it one more time so you want to paint the back of this so that it looks a little neater I painted mine just a plain black um, but I'm very happy with the result it has a working knocker as well the lichen and the willowy mushrooms on the right hand side will glow in the dark which is very exciting I also made some variations so I made a more flowery door with one of my signature butterflies um, these are all from canes that I have not used and then I made one that was completely off the wall and a very magical door which has got some handmade crystals adorning it as well as the glass beads and a lovely silver knocker the only thing that's left to do is go and hide them out there. And that's it guys, that's all there is to it. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this tutorial and following along with me. Thank you so much for watching, I love you guys, but uh, go on, get, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!